Hey, folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly. We're here for the inaugural Roosh Report with none other than the OG Brendan Roosh himself. Brendan, how are you? Doing great. I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, you got a great, you had a guide's day off today. Yeah, it's rare to have a day where I don't have to travel somewhere. Um, so, yeah, it was it was nice to, to wake up later than I'd like to admit and uh, take care of some things and hang out. Yeah, in the p.m., not the a.m., right? Uh, close to it. <laughs> good for good for you. And, you know, it's kind of funny because I talked to the guys at TCO uh, in State College. And, I mean, just like kind of everywhere, kind of on the eastern seaboard, we've gotten a fair amount of rain in the last week to 10 days. And I would imagine that's probably, at a minimum, wrecked your uh, your major tributaries, right? Yeah, we got kind of pushed off of the the larger rivers and and in a good way, kind of, you know, got to get back to, like, April conditions on some of the smaller bodies of water. So it's, it's been nice this year. It's kind of like once the tributaries start to get clear, the bigger rivers are coming down kind of like right into like the prime, like, you know, six inch fly water where it's like green, like four feet of visibility at most. Uh, and the big fish are just, you know, that's when they like to hunt. So, um, and then when it rains again, the tributaries are blown for a day or two and then you're back in that prime, prime water for at least a, a few days. Yeah. And I would imagine too, even though you're a little bit farther North than uh, some of the other folks I talked to about smallmouth, you know, I'd imagine you are well on the other side of, of the spawn. And I would hope your bass are probably not sulky anymore. Right. No. Yeah. The, the higher water kind of puts some pep in their stick. And, um, last week, like a week and a half ago, we were getting some pretty skinny fish, uh, post spawn kind of like in faster current, you know, prime, prime feeding spots. And this, uh, the past few days, the fish really put on some weight in that high water. And, um, yeah, I mean, they're almost at like pre-spawn weight and some of the fins are, you know, showing a little sign that they were, they were on beds recently, but the fish are, they're killing big flies and, uh, feeling, feeling fat and happy again. Yeah. And so with the kind of the elevated water, does that kind of put them on structure and they're just basically, you know, chasing ambushy? Is that kind of the MO? Yeah, for sure. Um, like I had one of the best days of my career uh, about a week and a half ago and we were on some bigger water and first fish of the day was like a 19 and a half and it was on mid river structure, like just a, a giant boulder. And um, that was kind of a good sign. Like, big post-spawn fish off the bed back in the ambush zone and uh yeah that kind of like set the tone for the rest of the day and a lot of those fish on the big river were just where they should have been kind of like in you know late march water where they're trying to pack the pounds on yeah got it and so kind of from a gear and tactics perspective you know are you kind of what are your fishing streamers sort of mid-column maybe with like uh intermediate lines i mean what's the what's the what's the game on the tactics yeah, with the water temps we have now, like post spawn in the high water, um, the fish are much more willing to come up than they are in late March, early April. So we're fishing kind of like the, the same flies on intermediates. Um, the pauses can be a little bit shorter than they need to be in early spring, um, which is cool because you you know you get to see some fish that really want to commit, and they'll they'll kind of just do a complete one eighty on the fly. So you get to see the whole profile of the fish. Um, fishing either keel changers or like that leggy boy platform. So like a small tungsten bead behind the brush head, uh, just to keep that fly from wanting to come up a little bit too high, but definitely the top third of the water column. Uh, got it. And sort of as, you know, things clear and the water drops, I mean, I know it's a little early for them to kind of spread out, you know, where should folks look if they want to find them, let's just say in a week or so, you know, where, where, where are they going to migrate to as the water drops and clears out? Um, fortunately, it looks like we have enough rain to keep flows kind of where they are. Um, but I think still like those, those mid river transitions, um, specifically in the, the rocky rivers that we have here, uh, you might find some fish up on some skinnier water, but I'm, I'm typically fishing that first real drop and the structure that relates to that, um, fishing pretty wide current seams when the water drops out, not necessarily looking at like the small three foot wide seams on the bank. 
uh, just because there isn't much isn't much margin for error in there when the fish are dealing with birds of prey constantly. Uh, got it. And so, you know, we're, you know, we're getting ready to cruise into the beginning of summer, I guess, officially with Memorial Day weekend coming up. You know, do you, uh, you know, it's going to be probably what a good month or so before your, uh, your topwater fishing really kind of turns on? Right now we're getting a lot of fish looking up for frogs um, and even some like bigger, like the, the largest size booba bug, for instance. Um, I'm not mentally there yet. Like I still want to see fish kill the biggest streamers possible. Um, but if they start eating flies, as soon as they hit the water, then we'll switch to a frog. Um, but yeah, we're looking at maybe, uh, three, four weeks until it's like prime top water season and, uh, kind of just like stick to the program, even if the morning isn't, or like the, you know, midday, it'll shut, shut off on top water, kind of stick to the program and usually you'll still get the larger fish looking up. Yeah, got it. And I guess, you know, are you in the, uh, are you in the middle of all the cicada craziness or is that not in your neck of the woods this year? Unfortunately, we're missing that this year, but, uh, it seems like a lot of people a little bit south of here, they're going to have a pretty good time. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been pretty nuts down here in the Carolinas and Virginia. People have been, uh, tearing up bass and they've been tearing up carp for sure. And, you know, folks, we love questions on the articulate fly. You can DM them to us or email them to us, whatever is easiest for you. And if we use your question on an upcoming Roosh report, I will send you some articulate fly swag. And we're putting, we're working on putting together the prize package uh, from Brendan, but at a minimum, it's going to have a bunch of Roosh angling swag and stickers, but I'm sure there's going to be some other cool stuff as well. And, you know, Brendan, before I let you go, you want to let folks know where they can find you on social media, book you and fish with you and all that kind of good stuff. And if you've got, uh, you know, kind of open windows in your guide calendar. Why don't you let folks know about those as well? Yeah, so you can reach me on Instagram at Brendan Roosh, B-R-E-N-D-A-N-R-U-C-H. Um, I just started a Facebook page for the business. Uh, it's Roosh Angling. And um, yeah, my phone number will be in the show notes. And uh, but what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh, open dates. Yeah, so I have some open dates spread throughout the summer. And if you want to get out and catch a bunch of smallmouth, uh, we can certainly do that on some subsurface stuff. But summertime is a great time to kind of hunt a bigger fish on top water. And uh, yeah, the rivers we have here are definitely well suited for that. Yeah, very, very cool. And I also know you're famous. You'll probably be tying with the log jam guys tomorrow night. If you got kind of uh, other places, people can kind of catch up with you and kind of see what you're doing uh, uh, when you're not on the water, um, doing crazy stuff with bananas and stuff like that, or listening to the Smiths. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, a few of my friends at log jam are crazy enough to want to tie flies with me every Tuesday night at eight thirty five Eastern. Um, so you can catch me there and, uh, that'll be a pretty good time. I would imagine I'll have some, maybe a house fly piece and a, a log jam hat and the giveaway as well. Yeah. Super cool. Well, listen, folks, you know, we are getting into that great time of the year where, you know, you don't necessarily have to put your trout right away, but there's some great warm water species you can chase on the fly. You owe it to yourself to get out there and catch a few tight lines, everybody tight lines, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs>